All righty, welcome everyone. My name is Clay Ratterman, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to track your finances, both traditional finance and cryptocurrency accounts. So all of your bank accounts, investment accounts, um, and crypto accounts live inside of Notion. So we will be using the tool Piggy Banker, which is something I've been working on for a little while now uh, to do so. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy and can get some use out of this if you are part of the beloved Notion community. So first and foremost, um, you're gonna go and sign up if you don't have an account, but I'm just going to log in here. Um, I've already went ahead and linked up some financial accounts to use for today's demo. Uh, as you can see, basically the way this works on the inside is if you have an investment account, you click add investments. If you have a traditional finance or bank account, you can click link new account here. Um, we are using uh, Plaid as our API aggregator. So basically, uh, for those of you that don't know what that means, it is all secure, encrypted. Um, and yeah, we never store or have any of your login credentials at all. This is only read, read only access, meaning again, we cannot do anything on your bank accounts. It is secure um, and encrypted again, like I mentioned. Same with crypto. Um, you go ahead and click link new account here. You can go ahead and connect your accounts. We have about 30 integrations right now. Um, you can use Coinbase and MetaMask, uh, Binance. So. As you guys go through this, um, obviously we're gonna continue to add to these lists, but we have over 11,000 institutions on the traditional finance side and uh, a growing list of the crypto providers. So again, as you guys can see here, you guys can see your different accounts. So I went ahead and linked up a Coinbase account and a MetaMask wallet. And then on the financial institutions, did some Chase credit cards, some Robinhood accounts, SoFi bank account, uh, Discover credit card, and then some PNC accounts. I'm trying to give you guys a wide range of uh, accounts to work with um, for this little demo. But basically that's it. So you connect all your accounts. Once they're connected, you go into the workflow section and you can start syncing up your data to your Notion account. So before we do that, um, if you guys don't already have a template made or a financial template that you wanna use, um, you can click on the templates section right here and you can go to our website and you can just use our starter template to make it easy. Um, we actually have an area for our community members. If you guys want to submit your own templates um, and get involved, we really, really appreciate that. But yeah, go ahead and click the, just the, the picture right here to get started with Notion. Um, again, this template is very, very basic and simple. This is early version ones. So we want to make it as simplistic as possible for you guys. Uh, but you'll just go ahead and click duplicate on the template. Give me just a second here. All right, there we go. So the piggy banker starter template is here. Um, and yeah, what we're going to do is just to give you guys a quick idea real quick about what the starter template is. There are three core databases. These are your accounts, your holdings, and your transactions. So these are the three core things that we think about uh, when tracking our finances. So again, accounts is obviously all of your different accounts, um, the balances, uh, account IDs, what institution it's, it's connected to. Um, your holdings is gonna go ahead and be all of your assets. So these are your crypto assets, your traditional finance, stocks, bonds, ETFs, things like that. Um, and then your transactions are obviously all the transactions that you're doing amongst those accounts. So you will go back to the website. Uh, once you have your template ready to use and it's in your Notion account, you'll click on workflows here. Uh, we are working currently on these two features, which will be very helpful for you guys. Uh, one connect is basically going to allow you guys to just click a button and it'll auto map all the workflows to your Notion template. And then obviously we're gonna be supporting Google Sheets as well. But you guys are all the Notion users if you're watching this video. Um, I'm a massive Notion fan myself and have been using it for many, many years now. So uh, how to support my Notion fans. But anyway, uh, you'll click connect here with Notion. We wanted to design this in a way where we could allow you guys to use whatever templates you want and connect the data however you see fit. 
So you're not locked into our templates by any means. But to give you an example of how our workflow section works, you can say, this is gonna be the account workflow. You'll actually select the workflow type. So this is actually saying what, what pieces of data you wanna be uh, bringing in and flowing over to Notion. So we'll do accounts for this example. Um, go ahead and select a Notion account. I need to add mine real quick. It's very simple. You just add it with this little OAuth integration. So that works. Let it load for us real quick. All righty. So again, um, now you select whichever Notion account you're using. So I'm gonna use my personal one here. And then I will go ahead and select the database. Let me refresh that. All righty, so now let's go ahead and select our accounts database. And we will just go ahead and select all of the accounts. We wanna send over the information from all of these. And now we get to map our properties. So inside of the accounts database I have in Notion, um, we'll go through and we'll map all of the different properties. So we'll say institution, we're gonna map that with the institution data that we're pulling in. Again, the left side here are the Notion properties of your database. So for example, those are these actual properties that you have set here. And then on the right side is the piggy banker data. So this is the data that we're pulling in from all those connected accounts. And we've tried to write it in such a way that it's logical and makes sense for you guys. Um, so institution is institution slash provider. Uh, the uh, account name, for example, we'll just go down the list is the account slash wallet name. Um, so we've actually done some logic to make the crypto and the traditional finance side um, work together for you guys. Uh, balance will be balance. Um, and as you can see, it shows you what property type it is here as well. Um, and then we'll do currency. So, balance currency. Let's go ahead and do financial class. Financial class just means, is it crypto investments or traditional finance? Uh, because we're dealing with all three here. Uh, we'll go ahead and add a couple more. So we'll do account ID and then we'll do, this will be account ID. And then lastly, we'll do date last updated. Cool. So that is how you start and activate one of these workflows. So you click the activate workflow button here and voila, that is a workflow that you just set up to send all of your financial information over to your database. As you guys see, once you click on your starter template, you should start seeing data flow and populate in to this area. So it's pretty cool. You can add again, custom workflows. So if you wanted to add different data pieces, um, you could, if you wanted to make it more simple and say, I just wanna see the, uh, the institution account name and balance. I don't care about all this other stuff. You could absolutely do that as well. Um, I really, really like this because I love tracking everything inside of Notion. And for me, instead of having to log into all my different bank accounts all the time, I can just look here every single day and see all the balances updated. Um, and yeah, see how I'm doing. So, uh, you can sum the properties down here at the bottom to see a little total of what's going on. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple and straightforward. This is what it looks like. Uh, and you can, again, do this for holdings and transactions. So I'll walk you guys through these two other steps and let you guys get started experimenting. So again, if you guys wanna start another workflow, you'll go ahead and click connect. We'll call this one holdings the holdings workflow type because this is going to pull in holdings data. Uh, we'll go ahead and use same notion account. And I'll actually just go ahead and select holdings here. Again, we're going to go ahead and select all the accounts. Now, obviously not all these accounts have holdings inside of them, but ones like Coinbase and MetaMask and Robinhood obviously will. 
Um, you can select them all. It's not a big deal. Uh, and then you go ahead and map all of the different property types. So the ticker will do, I'll just go quickly through here and map these. Uh, one second. We'll do the asset type. Asset type. Quantity, quantity. A uh, quick note here for holdings. Quantity is the amount of the asset that you're, or the number uh, of the asset that you are, like let's say you have 10 Tesla stocks that you, or 10, uh, yeah, 10 Tesla stocks that you own. Um, the, um, the fiat value is actually the amount. So the amount of money that it's worth and the quantity is the number of that asset that you own. So just a quick little caveat. Um, and then we go ahead and we'll do asset name. Also, the last really cool part about what we've built here is we can actually automate the relational properties as well. So these relations won't work unless you already have them created in the other workflow. So if I click account relation here, what I can actually do is I can select the accounts database that I already have created that has data inside of it. It's the workflow that we just created a second ago. And then I can actually select the accounts database. So what that'll do is inside of um, Notion when it uh, sends information over, well, let me just show you here. So if I click activate workflow here for the holdings, it should start to populate for us. So if I go back here and I click on the holdings tab, you guys will start to see your investments popping up in here. Um, so as these start to come through, uh, again, the really cool part about having that relational property is it actually automatically relates it. So you don't have to actually go in and click and relate these yourself, but it will relate them to the proper account that you have in your accounts tab. So that is a really nifty feature for us that we have built. So for example, if I want to go look inside of this database at what account is this associated to, I can see that it's this wallet address with this balance, and I can actually click on that account and go see more about it. So likewise, you can see all the holdings that are within this Ethereum wallet. Um, yeah, so that is the holding section. And let me show you guys the final piece here, which is the transactions. So we'll do this one last quick little transactions workflow here. So we'll do a transactions workflow. Um, again, this is if you guys want to nerd out and create all your own custom stuff. We will have an option to very quickly sync these up, but I really like customizing stuff. And I know the Notion community has a lot of templates and creators. So build your own templates, share them with the community, and let's all get our finances in order. Um, okay, so transactions. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and select all the accounts here. Um, but the reason we allow you to select different accounts, by the way, is like if you had a business account, for example, and you don't wanna see your business account mixed in with your personal account, you can unselect those and not worry about um, having data jumbled that you don't wanna see. So we really try to be as flexible as possible here. If you guys have recommendations, definitely let us know. Um, cool. So in the transaction side, We'll go ahead and do date posted. Um, so this is actually the transaction date. And then we'll do the description. This is the transaction description. We'll do the fiat amount. <laughs> uh, this is the number in the fiat currency that you're paying. Um, and then we'll do transaction type. This is just basically saying inflow versus outflow, like is money coming in or going out. Uh, auto categorizations, we can actually go ahead and categorize things for you guys. Um, we're gonna dive into future videos about how to go about categor uh, self categorization, but this is for basically us auto categorizing it for you. Um, and then the last thing we'll do is we'll actually relate this again to the accounts, just so we can see which accounts these transactions are related to.
So that's pretty much all we need for now. Um, this toggle down here means it, it basically allows you to pull in all of your current year to date data. Um, so if you don't select this option, it will only start pulling in transactions from today moving forward. If you do select this option, which everybody probably should select if you're new, um, it will pull in all of the transaction history from January 1st of this year moving forward because most people when you're tracking your personal finances need at least the current year to date data. Uh, we thought anything past that would be a little bit overkill. Uh, personally, you usually track your personal finances on a yearly basis and you need that for maybe it's tax purposes, um, just personal tracking purposes, things like that. So we always like to give the option of current year till now. So that's what I'll do. I'll click activate. Again, these are the three core workflows that you guys um, will probably want to use right off the bat. You can customize these, add as much or as little as you want. Uh, Transactions will take the longest because again, there's the most amount of data, but as you'll see, they will start populating here. Um, it will show you the account that it's associated with. It'll auto categorize them for you. Uh, this will obviously take a minute to pull in all of the transactions from all those accounts from the past uh, current year to date until now. Um, yeah, but these will all start popping up. These ones that you guys see that are, are blank right here, we're working on these. This is for uh, crypto transactions that, um, basically have, it's hard to explain, but they, these are for crypto transactions that have, uh, they're, these are the fees on the crypto transactions, like gas fees on Ethereum, for example. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. You guys won't have those popping up, but, um, all of your transactions will pull in and look nice and pretty here for you. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, if you have any questions at all, let me know. This is something I've been working on and really, really care about uh, helping people track their personal finances. I'm a personal finance nerd myself. Um, I have my degree in finance and just really didn't learn a whole lot in college about personal finances, but uh, have went on a long journey to do so myself. So if you guys have any questions, reach out to me. Uh, you can comment below, you can reach out on Twitter. Um, I want to make this the best possible thing for the Notion community. If you want to track your finances there, uh, or if you want to use Google Sheets, we'll have that soon for you. But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys get some value out of this and we'll see you in the next video.